everybody, my name is Quicken, and if it is your first time here, welcome. Second time here, welcome back. Today I want to explore one of my interests, and it is retail archaeology, retail apocalypse. So today I wanted to talk about what is wrong with Forever 21. Forever 21, if you don't know, is a fast fashion retail business that is mostly found in malls that sells clothing that are less than ideal in quality and they have recently filed for bankruptcy. In my city, my Forever 21, which really only opens like two years ago, just completely closed, went out of business, sold all the fixtures, and there is another Forever 21 in Philadelphia's mall that I visited to check out. Today, I want to redesign Forever 21 to be more successful. I don't love Forever 21, and if they take any of my ideas, please utilize my email address down below. It's also my PayPal. But in the wake of things, there are a ton of things that Forever 21 is doing wrong. And this is a brand I did grow up with. So I feel like maybe they should be growing up with me as well. So let's jump into it. And if it is your first time here, please subscribe. You can hit the notification bell if you would like to stay tuned for my content that I am increasing my schedule. So hopefully I see more of you. So click that bell icon down below and you can select always. That way you're in touch with my new upload schedule. I'll talk about it more in my live stream, which I'm filming after this, but this is coming out tomorrow. So check out that live stream from yesterday for more details. So let's get into it. Why do we hate Forever 21? Well, first of all, Forever 21 is a fast fashion giant. The word fast fashion, it's just not gonna work anymore. Not for millennials, but also not for Gen Z and people who are more focused on our future and sustainability. There are a lot of people who are ill-informed about the fashion industry, how unsustainable it is and how their practices are poor and less ideal for a bright green future. And I think this word fast fashion is something that is just disgusting. We don't like it anymore. And just to make it abundantly clear, I'm not talking about rebranding and not using the word fast fashion anymore in their branding. I'm saying that they are a fast fashion company and they should not be a fast fashion company anymore. They should practice slow fashion and more ethical, sustainable ways to produce clothing. Secondly, Forever 21's customer service is very, very poor. At least their customer experience is very, very poor. On my Instagram a little while ago, I reached out and I said, if you work at Forever 21, if you have any experiences, please contact me and tell me your story. And through reading through a ton of these experiences, and thank you, by the way, for submitting these things to me, a lot of them seem very personal and very stressful, and I just can't imagine. I would say if I created a graph off of the top of my head of an account of all of these stories, I would say more, at least 75% of the horror stories I gathered from Forever 21 current and past employees had to do with their customers and not necessarily Forever 21 as a company. Not trying to put blame on the customers, I think Forever 21 is the petri dish that created a system where the customers don't treat Forever 21 the store or the employees with any respect. It is a broken window theory because my next point is that Forever 21, the inside can be trashed sometimes. I understand that employees can only do so much, but broken window theory says that if you walk past a dilapidated building and the window is broken, someone will feel more encouraged to take a rock and throw it at the next window and keep vandalizing this building because it was originally vandalized in the first place. This, to me, broken window theory may explain an urban environment, but it also explains Forever 21. If I see shirts and shoes all thrown about and I'm trying on shoes as well, if there's a big pile of shoes already in front of me, I'm more likely to just put the shoes I'm trying on in that pile than give a shit about putting them where they belong. And that could go with folding shirts, putting clothes that fall off back on the rack. I mean, I worked in retail, I worked in soft lines, not me, but still, when I walk into a Forever 21 and it's completely disheveled, 
Ew, I don't like it. If your place of business looks like that, if your employees let it happen and nobody cares, customer and employee, both of us don't care, then it just creates mess. The first video I ever saw of Graveyard Girl, who is a legendary creator on the platform, the, the video that introduced me to Graveyard Girl was hey, a video where funny. she talked about a horrible experience she had at a changing room at Forever 21. Not, does this thing really work? Not any of that. Literally, Bunny Myers experience at Forever 21, and I have never forgotten. Because I had a bad experience at Forever 21's changing room, and I looked it up online to see if other people had had it as well. And if I learned anything at Ham U, it's if you upset one customer, they're more likely to tell 10 people their story. I mean, Bonnie Myers told a million people, but still. The next thing that we hate about Forever 21 is the very poor quality of clothing that has no underlying message other than if I could find this underlying message, it would be hot girl. Cheap clothes, hot girl, don't you want to be cool? That is the eternal message of Forever 21. And it is a message that does not align with the current demographic that they are going after. I understand that like cheap like clothes are always going to be appealing to somebody and Forever 21 has done a really great job of being like, don't you need a new dress for Saturday? But there have been countless times where I've gone into Forever 21 and held up a little dress that I was like, who is this for? Who is this dress for? What does it do? I'm scared. And because of that, because of that like hot girl, cool girl mentality, I feel like I'm often ostracized by a garment because I can't figure out what the underlying message would be. Other companies that have like sexy or like cutie or like going out Saturday night clothing don't give me this same like FOMO feeling as Forever 21 quite does. And Forever 21's online presence is just shit. Their website is shit. Their Instagram is shit. Throw the whole thing out. So what would I do to change Forever 21? The first thing I would tackle is finding that core message. In this, I compared to Forever 21 to Aerie. So Aerie is American Eagle's lingerie and like loungewear sister store. Often they're either together, but I've seen standalone Aerie's. Aerie is a store that has a very defined and clear message. Aerie's lingerie is for everybody. I feel more at home in that store than I ever would a Victoria's Secret, which sells similar clothing. When I go to Aerie, I feel like it's me and the girls, or it's me and my life, and me and my me time, my self-care. Aerie does a really great job creating this story for you when you walk in. I think something really great that Aerie does is they have a bunch of pictures from Instagram of real people. Looking into it, these real people are ambassadors of Aerie, and Aerie does send them goods, but they, at the core, are just regular people. They're mostly pe girls in college. Aerie does send them the products, but when you go to their Instagrams, they're real ass people, and they'll post a picture in their beautiful Aerie fuzzy sweater next to a post of them studying and stressed out, and that's real to me. They're younger than me, but I swear when I tell you, I didn't follow the girl because it's literally her personal account and she's not a celebrity and I felt weird. The way she styled the box that Aerie sent her for winter literally defined <laughs> like how I shopped for like the next week. It was real. I loved it. I am obsessed with her. That's Aerie's message. Is Aerie fast fashion? Yes. But they've done a really good job of showing a variety of body types, a variety of ethnicities on their website with no photoshopping, no airbrushing. You know, I'm a little sensitive to like, you know, a little capital capitalism ploys, but I found myself only shopping in Aerie. These, this Aerie right now. Forever 21 does not have that core messaging and it doesn't need to be feminism. It doesn't need to be body positivity so on the nose, but it does need to be something. Because when I go into Forever 21, I feel like corporate mommy is trying to feed me cheap clothes. And I like them because I'm a little bitch with no money. 
And I'm like, oh my God, that's really mean of you. <laughs> and with this, it's my next point. Use this brand new atmosphere and this brand new core message and bring it into the store to show styling. Forever 21, when you walk into the store, they try to create these style zones. If you've ever been caught up in this whirlwind of the style zone, right now they're really pushing a like Billie Eilish style. And last year, Forever 21 was actually sued for pushing this like hyper Ariana Grande style that was not co-signed by Ariana Grande. You know, if you're into those stylings and you come to Forever 21 and you feel like, well, there's a big variety, I could be whoever I want. I'm into that, but they don't show you how to style these, like, these pairings. And when they do, it's very hyper editorialized. I think pictures throughout the store of real people similarly to Ari, where it's real, actual people wearing the clothes and they're styling it and they have their own unique spin and it's more relatable. So the next thing, atmosphere, store staff, and customers. Like I mentioned earlier, when I pulled former and current employees, most of the complaints were about customers. In Philadelphia, our public transit system is called SEPTA, and if you ever get bored one night and want to look at the reviews of a city's public transportation system, a lot of the reviews are bad. But you expect the re reviews to be like, the bus never came. The highest percentage of complaints are about other customers on the bus while you're riding the bus. So you ask yourself, what could SEPTA even do in this situation? If someone complains that there's a big pile of sunflower seeds on their seat, it means the person before them didn't care about the bus and ate their sunflower seeds and put it in the seat next to them. This is a bigger problem with, I would say, overall perspective and respect that is granted for SEPTA and Forever 21. When you go into a Forever 21 and it's super disheveled and there's a bunch of rules for the fitting room and everything is like $2 marked down for some reason and all the employees are nowhere to be found, you're just gonna treat it like shit. Like, I think that the employees have a lot to do. When they're at work, you know, a lot of the employees who messaged me said that stock was coming every two days and they had to put more and more stuff on the floor and rotate things and switch them out. So there's not an opportunity for someone to be on the floor or to clean up very often. When I worked at Target, I would straighten up almost after every single customer. At Target, the clothing section is pretty small. Target does have sections, you know, Massimo, maternity, stuff like that, that kind of cater to different people so you have a feeling of variety. However, Forever 21, it's too much. The stores are too big, the stock is too much, and there's just too much product on the floor. So customers are having almost the same sensation as trying to find a movie on Netflix. You're becoming increasingly frustrated because there is just too much choice. I think that Forever 21 needs to scale back entirely. I used to work at a boutique on South Street, which is kind of a touristy district, and when we would put things on the rack, you would have to have three finger space in between each hanger so people could look through the shirts, but they weren't like trying to barge through and just open up a little bit to see what the shirt is. A nice calming experience where you are relaxed and you know, you're not digging through a pile of shoes on the floor and everything like that. It's just nice curated, and this curation will add a sense of respect to the customer. They see that things are carefully laid and there's more of an incentive to leave them just how they found it. If they found it on the floor though, that's where they would leave it. And from management perspective, because I know working at Forever 21 probably sucks, I would love if there was more incentives to empower employees. I meet people who work at Urban Outfitters and love it. They love Urban Outfitters. Urban Outfitters, they have really good incentives and programs for employees. They offer a ton of discounts for their employees. If you work at Urban Outfitters in Philadelphia, you also get discounts at local restaurants. It's really, really cool. But I still meet people all the time who love their job at Urban and they stay there. I've met people who still, you know, do one Saturday a month, so they still work at Urban. I swear I do. 
I have never heard a Forever 21 employee gush about working there, but I think it could really be the wave. If you treat employees well, pay them enough to make it their career and love it, I think that you will see morale change. Hoping that you can just circulate through employees and find the next one who will give you a little more for free or less and just keep, you know, putting on the resume, eager to work, highly motivated. No, you need to create a space where employees are naturally motivated because their job energizes them to be better, not, you know, this free pep talk, no. Next for atmosphere, something that I thought Forever 21 could really use is a concierge service. If you ever go to Topshop, I mean probably only for like Beyonce, but you can get a personalized shopper to follow you around the store. And obviously I've never utilized the service. The shopper comes with you in the store and I guess you can tell them your vibe and they help you shop. I don't know about top shops in and outs at all, but I think that Forever 21 should adopt something kind of similar. Even Target now, if you go to some of these newer Targets, they have a person in the beauty section with a little iPad and you can talk to them and they can help you with your, your buying choices. People need to have experiences. There are so many Forever 21 retail physical stores. There needs to be something that encourages you to go to the Forever 21. People want to shop for experiences. This is not a new concept. This is the way retail is, is shaping. If you go to Nike, they will 3D print a shoe that is exactly your foot size down to the centimeter. But what does Forever 21 offer? I think that if they have too much stock and it's confusing and all of their pictures are in models that we don't look like, Offer somebody in the store that can help somebody navigate this process. I have never been to a Forever 21 where someone asked me if I needed help. I know that there sometimes is a greeter. I haven't been to a Forever 21 with a greeter. If there is a greeter like Urban Outfitters, when you walk in, you can talk to the greeter. Having an experience like even like that just adds something else to the experience, especially because you're trying to attract customers that otherwise may just go to online services. Forever 21 has said that online is not the biggest margin of their sales. You walk in and someone with an iPad helps you curate your look. You can say, I'm shopping for back to school or I just started wearing pink and someone can help you. I think that that bond that you make with somebody will encourage you to come back and it will encourage a personalized sale and it will give you that atmosphere where you're like, this is for me. With additional experiences, I think that Forever 21 needs to do something with their stores. Recently, I feel like all of their stores are these weird, like white bratty mausoleums and I can't relate. I feel like maybe Forever 21 wanted to serve you like rich lady's entire closet and like that's all well and good but eat the rich. I think Forever 21 needs to change their interior to match the people who they are selling the clothes to which is Gen Z, Millennials and I think that that white and silver does appeal to some people but I think that it's cold and sterile and I think a little bit of life would change the atmosphere at Forever 21 because they try to be this like opulent retail space, but then they sell like Red Hot Cheetos leggings. And you're like, did somebody drop that here? I don't, it doesn't add up. I think that the interiors, one could reflect the places that they're in. The store in, in Philadelphia is stark white and silver and it doesn't quite make any sense and the ceiling was painted black so there's kind of this like over lurching like i don't know i felt like i felt like i was in a basement so i think similarly to urban outfitters which constantly changes up the retail space they have staff that works with urban outfitters that travels around contractors and carpenters who change the interior designs pretty frequently I think that could attract customers who, you know, they shop at Forever 21 and they come back every few weeks. It's nice because they can say, oh, I like this. They might take a selfie even, and there you go. I know how badly you want people to take selfies inside of Forever 21, but 
yuck, I'm not gonna do it. I also think that Forever 21s could adopt some of the local flavor. There is a coffee shop in Philadelphia called La Colombe, which has a huge mural from a local artist, and it's about coffee, but when you sit under it and drink your coffee or you take a little picture, you know that you're in a curated space where the owner said, hey, I want a local artist and they commissioned them and they paid someone in your community to put art in a space where you have to be. And it just reflects in a way that people appreciate. I think, you know, having someone on staff or having someone who travels maybe regionally or within a group of stores to add specialized curation to stores will go so much further than this white, sterile atmosphere of a rich lady's closet because I don't want to be in her closet. Also, things aren't adding up. Why would she have this dumbass Care Bear shirt? It doesn't make sense to me. Create things that make sense so your shoppers aren't confused and so they have something to enjoy. So let's talk about products. If you're wondering why I was wearing this throwback dog shirt, it is because it is one of the few pieces I have left of my time in shopping fast fashion that has lived. But if you can see this bottom part of the shirt, the hem is actually all twisted inside. No matter how much I iron it, the quality is just not there. Quality of the products must change. We went there and we saw pants hanging on the rack that were already wrinkled. People have called this Forever 21 fabric, and I want it off of the shelves. I want it out of our thrift stores. I want it out of our landfills. I hate this Forever 21 fabric. I hate it. You can't iron it. It shows all your lumps and bumps, and once you wash it once, all of the like seams crinkle and fold in on each other, and it's awful. Get it out of here. It has no resale value. It has no secondhand quality. It's just no more of that fabric. The quality must change to return the trust of the customer and to help the earth. Secondly, because I wanted to say that part I just said last, getting rid of all of the clutter inside of the store. By this, I mean the little grab and go products while you wait in the line, all of that stuff, get rid of it. It's all really cheap crap. And you see it and you recognize it from the dollar store, you recognize it from Wish and AliExpress, and with the popularization of Wish, you recognize the products in Forever 21's little grow area, and you're like, wait, I saw that on Wish. They can't even hide it anymore. It has to go. Get rid of all that crap. Even though it can be helpful and you're like, oh, I love Forever 21's makeup remover wipes. All of it has to go. I think that the lines should be open and you just wait in the line and you're not corralled like cattle. I thought, you know, what does anthropology's line look like? Of <laughs> Like the highest end of the spectrum. And even though anthropology does have sort of a little corral area, Anthropology also has self-checkout. And when I did Anthropology self-checkout, one, I felt like Anthropology trusted me as a customer. They have this little touch screen set up and next to it is a little counter space. You know, if you get a mug, it has paper, you can wrap it. Anthropology's shopping bags are nice, recycled, reusable tote bags. And you pay with credit as most of us do. And then you just walk out. I love the trust. And I feel like the responsibility and the carefulness is all there. I had a really nice experience with that. I know that there are complications with having tellerless cashiers and things like that. And cash should always be a viable option. I pay with cash. I think if you have options, it shows that you are appealing to different demographics. An example, Sev and I both went to Taco Bell and there was a touch screen to order and a person you could order from. And Sev went right to the touch screen almost organically. We teased her, but it, it was a really cool experience because that's how some people just prefer to shop. With that, I think that the jewelry section also needs to be scrapped or completely redone from the ground up. Cheap jewelry is not it. Do you really wanna sell cheap jewelry? Do you want to be the hotspot for cheap jewelry? 
in the Forever 21 we went to, where it said jewelry, next to it, it said $3.99. It looked like something that you would see at like a bootleg market. And I would say that the quality of this jewelry is AliExpress bootleg. You and your friends know not to buy earrings from AliExpress, but do you and your friends know not to buy earrings from Forever 21? They're from the same place. I think that Forever 21 would completely win if they started specializing in low-end curated fine jewelry. A little space where they have little 14 karat hoops, almost like how Claire's has a little sterling silver section, and they're like, it's for people with allergies. Let's switch it, and it can be for everyone and it's elevated, and that's the direction we go to at Forever 21. Curated fine jewelry at a little bit of a markup, obviously, but people can get $3.99 hoops from Wish and leave it there. Forever 21, I think if they curated little spaces and they took in fine jewelers and had fine jewelers curate it with them, and if it was, you know, Majuri for Forever 21, Something like that, that makes people want to wear your jewelry and care about it and know that it's not gonna turn green and know that they can only use it for a weekend. Give people a reason to care about your products and they will. I think that the jewelry section is trash and get rid of it. Make it more important if you're going to sell jewelry. This was my first idea and then everything else was built on that. I think Forever 21 should have a curated section from an artist, a celebrity, a fashion designer, an up-and-coming fashion designer, a curated collection. It doesn't need to have their name on it, it doesn't need to be their merch, a curated space. I think that this curation could be thrifted items. American Apparel used to have upcycled items that you could buy, Urban Outfitters has upcycled lines that you can buy within their store of things that are thrifted and curated. I think that more stores are doing curated thrift. Macy's has a thread up section. I would love to see Forever 21 take on recycled styles if it is a curated thrifted section or a curated green or eco-conscious or sustainable collection. I think that all of their quality products are trash and they need to go organic and sustainable or else Vans, the sneakers, they do curated spotlights within their store and Rosie and I went to check it out the other day because one of her friends was the selected curator and I thought that that was so special. Because of that and because I could be like, oh, I know someone who knows her, it, it gave me perspective but it also made me check it out. It made us go there, it made us look at it and you know that it's not some like corporate entity who's stealing our data and figuring out our interests. It's a real person who is better at this than you. So let them curate it. Like a young up and coming designer, that is fun for me. Someone on Instagram who has like only 100 followers but you really like their style, I would go crazy for that. There is a store in Philadelphia called Retrospect which I believe is owned by Goodwill but it is a completely curated space. And one woman, who I've never met, but I know she's a legend, curates all of the pieces in retrospect. It's not even called Goodwill. It is a really, really cool, awesome experience. And what she does is she goes out into the world and finds these specific pieces that fit Philadelphia, that fit trends, and it's still Goodwill, so it's still eco-friendly. You know, maybe I don't want Forever 21 to dominate this precious market, but I think that with their resources and with customer demand, having a curated section from, you know, just somebody cool, someone in Philly, or, you know, even Lil Nas X. Like, Lil Nas X curated for Forever 21 would have me excited, but they need to get rid of all of this stupid Red Hot Cheetos terrible licensing and switch licensing to curation. Because even though I was excited to find a Sailor Moon bodysuit secondhand on Depop, when I saw that it was from Forever 21, I was like, yo, ew. And I don't want them to do that to Sailor Moon. Finally, branding. I can say this in a couple sentences. Forever 21's branding is all over the place and they need to stop. 
I've seen Forever 21 written in Roman numerals, I've seen Forever 21 in like three different size fonts, and Forever 21 has a bunch of in-house collections that are all over the place and they need to quit it. I think that their branding needs to change, and it has to be done right. It can't be vegan lipstick Kat Von Beauty. Forever 21's change needs to be seamless and effective. I've been thinking about this for the last few days and I thought F21 could be cool because it's like B2. Millennial Craft and Barrel that I want to shop at so bad but prices are still not quite where I need them to be. I thought F21, you know, people wouldn't forget it. Dunkin' Donuts recently rebranded to Dunkin' and you didn't know because you call it Dunkin' anyway. I think F21 or just Forever. If they were rebranded as Forever and they changed their clothing to more conscious design, eco-conscious, green-friendly, and then rebranded as well as Forever, and they curated their store, and they had local artists or local flares inside of their store, and the stores were experiences and things were different, I think this word Forever would be exciting to the demographic that they are trying to appeal to, and not the demographic they're trying to just rob for money. Here, buy this piece of tissue, you poor bitch. I hate feeling that way, stop hurting my feelings Forever 21. But I also grew up as a mall rat, I spent a lot of time at the malls, and Forever 21 holds so much retail, retail space inside of malls. We'll see the end of malls, which is sad for me, because there's not a single mall I've ever been to where I haven't just felt this strange feeling, if it's to shop, if it's to hang, if it's to be. I spend a lot of time in dead malls now and I still get the same feeling. But I would love if Forever 21 came in here and was like, yo, let's admit it, this is all trash. We're failing, we're bankrupt. Nothing has changed. They tried to create this store, Riley Rose, where it was all makeup and that failed right away. No makeup, none of that shit. Let other people do it. You need to focus. You spread yourself too thin, you went bankrupt. Let's reorganize and become a better store. Also on here I said unisex styling because I would like them to get rid of the men's section completely and offer unisex. No store has done unisex very well yet. I think Uniqlo does unisex in a way where they're not telling you it's unisex but like you could just shop wherever a section. I would love to see Forever 21 take on unisex, like right now. And that's my idea, so pay for it. Anyway, my name is Quickened. I have a similar vi video where I talk about the retail apocalypse, but I would love to know how you feel. Do you have fond memories of Forever 21? Because I can remember the total decrease and spiral of Forever 21. And listen, I remember asking my friends, can we still shop here after we turn 21? So this is how I would change it. Just because I think so much is wrong, it was kind of easy for me to approach this video. If you like videos like this, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and leaving a comment down below. My name is Quicken, and if you would like to subscribe to me, by all means, I would like to entertain you during this time. Anyway, bye.